Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 265 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. No. No? Oh, no, you're right. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Great. 265 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Keelan's back. Hello. Uh, Well, technically, he never left. Um, I've just been calling other people Keelan the whole time. And no one really noticed. Uh, even on Patreon, when Rosie was doing your job and I was calling her Keelan, not a single comment about it. So, uh, mate, that says a lot about you, doesn't it? <laughs> However, people noticed something uh, recently. I wasn't here last week, okay? I got a lot of messages. Where's the episode? Oh, you missed another one. Okay, excuse yep. me. I've, had a, I've been on a hot streak with this show and I've got COVID, all right? I'm allowed to have an hot illness. Streak. Hot streak. I'm allowed to have a fucking... Transmit, transmittable disease, okay? Mm. I do one Luke Kidgel show, I come home with an illness, all right? <laughs> you know, I knew I should have only performed to my fans who never leave the house other than to come see me, but unfortunately I had to perform to a bunch of girls with social lives, and that gave me COVID, all right? But I'm here, I'm back now. I didn't do last week's... I thought about doing last week's episode late, but then I was like, well, I don't want to lose my voice because I've been losing my voice a little bit on stage since I had COVID and I didn't want to just yell for an hour and blow it. So you know what? You're welcome. I'm here. I'm back. I'm healthy. Uh, and Keelan's also here. And healthy. And he's back. A bit tired. He's a bit tired? Oh, <laughs> poor Keelan. He's sleepy. Yeah. Yeah. Look, <laughs> guys, I've had, I've, had a, I've had a fun time, okay? I finally got all my surgeries locked in. Finally have dates. And I'm excited to say that everything I said last week was wrong. I was told the wrong information. Last episode, not last week, last episode of the show, I said that I would, I would get the surgery that would give me a gap tooth for six months and then I would get braces. That is wrong. That's wrong information that I was told. That's disinformation, right? That's propaganda. What's actually going to happen is I am on May 4th, may the 4th be with you, right? Just about the nerdiest date of the year, I will be getting braces at 28. Congratulations. On the same day as uh, my, my, my girlfriend's little brother who's living with us. So it's like a little family outing. On May the 4th, we're all going in to get braces together. Except, right, he's 14. I'm fucking 28 years old. So for him, it's appropriate. For me, it's embarrassing. <laughs> so that means that in about two weeks' time, you know, the, in three weeks, the episode is going to be the first ever Spearhead Sundays with braces. Great. And then I get my surgery and that's the one that's going to give me a gap tooth that will progressively be made wider and wider and wider. And it, it will no longer be Spearhead Sundays. It'll be Spearhead Sundays. Welcome to the Spearhead Sundays show. I'm your host, Louis Spear. I'm going to sound like fucking Daffy Duck for an hour. That's what you guys can look forward to. And, and do I'm actually concerned that it's going to negatively affect all of my audio content. And and every time I say that, no one tries to say, oh, no, it'll be fine. <laughs> like, no one's like, oh, no, I think uh, people can get around. I think, I think uh, which means that my personality can't overcome a speech impediment, which is unfortunate to hear from all my friends. <laughs> But, you know, I'm going to keep it all rolling. I'll probably have to have like one, maybe two weeks off. Uh, we'll, we'll probably try and pre-film the podcast. We might not get around to doing it. We'll have to see. It's all up in the air right now. I've, I've, I feel like I've finally locked in my year. But this also means, right, uh, the second surgery doesn't happen until early next year. So I can potentially do a tour at the end of this year or halfway through this year depending on how quickly my speech comes back because I'm going to have the gap tooth and then metal apparatus in my mouth and braces. So I'm probably going to have to relearn how to speak. But once I do, I should be able to get back on the road and maybe these shows in Melbourne won't be the only shows I do, which I'm actually very excited about because these shows have been so fun. Thanks to everyone who came out. There's, uh, oh, it's all over now, actually. because This is coming out on Sunday. So you missed it, all right? And that's your fault. And you should be disappointed. I want, I want an apology in the comment section. Uh, if you came out, uh, thank you very much. Uh, really, really fun shows. I, uh, you know, it's been such a weird experience where I was only doing six and then I did one and then I had to take a week off because of COVID and then I've started again. So I had to get like in the flow, out of the flow and then back in it. I'm in it right now and I'm feeling really good. The show's, uh, the show's awesome. The crowd work we've been doing is great. We've been putting out heaps of clips uh, and uh, yeah, everything's popping, man. Everything's going well. I'm getting heaps of views on YouTube shorts of all platforms, you know? I never I never thought I'd be a YouTube short stand-up comedian. 
I thought I thought I'd be like blowing up on TikTok or Instagram Reels. Apparently, I'm the YouTube Shorts guy. So cop that, everyone else who's blowing up on superior platforms. <laughs> I'm the YouTube Shorts guy. I might as well be blowing up on fucking MySpace or Snapchat with a Snapchat story. But here I am. I'm the YouTube Shorts guy. YouTube Shorts is really good because if you blow up on TikTok, right, you get a bunch of annoying comments like, oh, when are you coming to to Melbourne? When are you coming to Sydney? Or I just bought tickets to one of your Australian shows, right? That's annoying. What I really like to see is when I blow up on YouTube Shorts, oh, man, when are you coming to Albuquerque? Mm. <laughs> Everyone just from America is just blowing, is blowing up my comment section going, man, you should come to Texas. You should come to Illinois. Come to California. Come to New York. <laughs> And then one Swedish guy will go, come to this town with 13,000 syllables. <laughs> Can't even see it or pronounce it. Say it or pronounce it. Maybe when I get my braces on, I'll be able to say some of your fucking weird towns. But until then, <laughs> I won't. It's good. It's good, man. Comedy. I'm, I'm back doing comedy. But I was thinking, right? I was thinking uh, of quitting comedy and just starting rap. You know, I think I'm just going to quit being a comedian and start being a rapper because I think that it's so easy to just quit a craft you've been honing for like over a decade, start a new one and just, you know, let it rip. I reckon I'm going to quit comedy and start rap because that's what rapper T.I. has done. He's quit rap and he started comedy. Now, T.I. is uh, a very famous rapper who is known, unfortunately, for introducing Iggy Azalea to the world. And then like uh, one song. What's a song this T.I. guy's done? What's his biggest song? You, gee, you know a rap has fallen off when you hear stories about them getting booed off stage during a comedy gig instead of their latest single going well. Whatever you like from 2008. Whatever you like from 2008. Oh, I know that song. That's all right. How's it go? Uh, maybe I don't know that song actually. I feel it sounds familiar. What's another song? Live your life. Live your life. Okay. Dead and gone. Dead and gone. Oh, what man? That's like uh, that's a whole circle of life in three songs. Whatever you like, <laughs> live your life. Dead and gone. Yeah. That's start, middle, and end. He was in Ant Man. He was in Ant Man as who? The Ant. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't say. It just says Ant Man. Dude, rappers who have fallen off get to have the the strangest careers. Dave. Dave, I feel like uh, I feel like being a rapper who's fallen off is is more fun than being a rapper who's currently on. Being a rapper who's crushing it and killing it seems really stressful. Like it seems like at all times you have to be like super tough and you have to you know maintain the flame that you had when you were broke and poor, which is a big reason why you became successful. And then all of a sudden you don't really have any other problems, but you have to rap about some kind of struggle. So you talk about oh I. Uh, they made me wait in line at Gucci. That was annoying. I have a lot of money. I can buy my children some toying. See, this is why I'm not a rapper, right? But I assume that it's easy. But I feel like being a rapper who's fallen off is such a fun job. You know, you look at T.I. He's just hanging out with Iggy Azalea, you know, just, just promoting bad rappers as like a prank on the rest of the world. Now we started comedy. You look at uh, Ice T. He's just in Law and Order playing a cop, you know? I think that seems like a lot of fun. Ice Cube, he's just got a reality TV series with a chick that has huge fake tits. That's amazing. Or am I confusing them? Is that the same person? I think that's the same person that I'm talking about that has those. The Ice T and Ice Cube are different people, but I think that Ice T is doing both of those things. Does Ice Cube have a reality TV series? <laughs> Hang on. Search Ice Cube wife. And if she, and because uh, I'll recognize those titties anywhere. Yeah, I, I, look, the point is, guys, <laughs> what, is he, what has he got? Let me look. Okay, no, no, no. I'm thinking, okay, Ice T is doing both of those things. Okay, so what's Ice Cube doing? Oh, hang on. Ice T is the one that I, has. This is Ice T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ice T is in Law and Order and has the wife reality TV show. And he seems really happy. You know, who's another, like T Pain doesn't really do music anymore. Now he's like a Twitch streamer and he looks like he's having way more fun. It looks way more fun. Who else has retired? Logic. He retired, right? When he was a rapper, no one really thought he was that good other than his fans. Now that he's retired, all the people who hated him loved it. And they're like, oh, great job, good call. And all the people who like him are just tuning into his Twitch streams and like liking a family photo every now and then. It seems great. 
You never see comedians who have fallen off doing well or better, you know? Like, uh, what's fucking Michael Richards doing right now? Probably just like reliving that moment at the comedy store over and over again in his head still. Who's Michael Richards? Uh, Kramer. Oh. <laughs> you know, like I don't think a, a comedian who has fallen off is having as much fun as a rapper who doesn't do rap anymore. So T.I., as part of his like a post-rap, let's see what I can get away with era in his career, has decided to just jump into comedy. Uh, and it's not going well. You know, comedy is a very difficult craft to step into because you have to be shit in front of people. It's a skill, right, you, that you need to learn and improve on, but it's one of the only skills that you can truly, that you can only truly practice in front of an audience. And when you're famous before comedy, starting it, you don't really get to do open mics where you bomb in front of seven people and it's fine because it was only seven people, right? You just uh, end up doing theatres because you can sell the tickets, right? And then people go to these shows expecting you to be good because it's in a theatre and then you suck because you don't know what you're doing and then they get upset. And this happened to T.I. recently. He did a, he did a gig, right? He did an actual comedy club gig, which I respect, right? A small one. He did a little comedy club gig. And then uh, he goes on stage. He does his set. And then after his set, uh, a lady comedian goes on after him and he starts heckling her for some reason. Mm. I don't know why you would do that. Like, you're the guest in the comedy space. Sure, you're a super famous guy who used to be good at rap. But now, if you're stepping into the comedy world... Like if I go when I go and hang out with rappers, I'm not like, yeah, I'm a I'm a fucking famous comedian. I'm not in their world, so I'm like respectful. And if I'm in a studio and they're recording music, I'm not going to be like, you should do it like this. I'm just like sitting back and feeling lucky to be there, you know? I'm also not doing that because uh rappers will punch you in the face, you know? Like there's there's never been a moment where I've hung out with comedians and gone, I better watch my mouth. <laughs> you know like that that doesn't happen in comedy right oh i better watch what i say or or six hours after i say it someone might subtweet me you know that's never in my head but ti is at this comedy gig and this comedian's performing she's jumped up on stage and he's heckling her and because she's a comedian right she just comes out and slams him and brings up sexual assault allegations from like 10 years ago bang Whip that out. She said, this is a comedy show. If you want to make jokes about something, I'll make jokes about something. You're not going to tell me to shut the fuck up. Hey, man, never mind. I read the wrong paragraph. Oh, okay. But that's what he said back to her. This is a comedy show. If I'm going to talk about it, I'll joke about it. You're not going to tell me to shut the fuck up. Right. And this is after he's heckled her. Well, so what did she say to him? Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've messed this up. Um... <laughs> Keelan has one week off and he comes back and he doesn't know how to read an article. <laughs> I, I was reading the article, sorry. Yeah. She said, um, she started heckling him and then he goes, take off your wig. I guess she's wearing a wig. She said, I'll, I'll take off my wig when you speak on the allegations. <laughs> That's good. That's a good one. So you can't, you can't have allegations and be a heckler, you know? Like sometimes someone will try and heckle me and they'll have a funny job and it won't end well for them. You know, I've never been heckled by a guy who's who who had a few people go, hey, I didn't like it when he touched me there. You know, it's not going to end well for you, dude. And then he ended up storming the stage mm. and like trying to intimidate her, which is very rap behavior, you know, like just getting in a woman's personal space and threatening to hit her. Like that's pretty rap, isn't it? You know, you don't see that very much at comedy gigs, right? No one's no one's getting on stage with Hannah Gadsby and threatening to backhand her because they think it looks cool and tough. It's just not happening. And that's when he started like being super aggressive, saying, There's no motherfucking case. Ain't never been no motherfucking case. I didn't do nothing. My wife didn't do nothing. Um, and just like is swearing at her. And the the reason there's no case is because uh the statute of limitations came into play. So <laughs> so so what he should have said is like there ain't technically no case. There technically never was no case, and technically I didn't do anything. You can't prove it in a court of law. Right? That's what he really should have said if you wanted to be fact checked. But hey. You know, I'm just standing up for my comedian sister. Um, but what I like about this is after this, right, this story goes viral. And uh, then um, T. 
T.I. comes out, because obviously it goes super viral that he, footage of this, of him like intimidating a female comedian after he performed, right, trying to get into comedy, goes super viral, obviously, because he's T.I., the super famous guy that curses with Iggy Azalea. So he has a lot to pay for, right? The community doesn't like him already. You gave us Iggy, right? And then uh, he comes out and puts a video on his Instagram defending himself because she came out and said, oh, he called me a bitch. He was being a cunt. He was being an asshole. He was heckling me. So I responded in kind. And then he came out and tried to make it sound like uh, she actually had a go at him unprovoked, right? He was saying, oh, you know, I was being, I was there to do comedy and she just ended up having a go at me and I responded. And she said that wasn't true. And she said, oh, he was calling me a bitch. So then T.I. responds again, and he goes, if you can find a video of me calling you a bitch, I will give you $1 million. And then 20 minutes later, she posts a video of him calling her a bitch <laughs> and goes, run me my money. Where's my million? And I think that's great behavior by the comedian. Like, this is why you don't go up against comedians at a show or online. Like, like do you think you're going to come across better when the comedian has now, like you lost in the room when the comic is on their feet and is kind of intimidated by your physical presence because you're a big guy. Do you really think you're going to be able to outsmart them when they're sitting on their couch at home eating ice cream and have time to think about their rebuttals? You know, like every single time I destroy a heckler, on the way home, I think I should have said this. I should have said that. You don't want to go toe to toe with me when I have time to draft my replies, you know? And show a friend and be like, what do you think about this? Can we punch this up? How can I hurt his feelings even more? It's not going to end well for you, TI, or TIP, or whatever. The, what does TI stand for? What does it say? It, does, it doesn't stand for anything. It doesn't look like it. Dude, no. that's so TIP, rap. TIP, though. He's, he's, his real name is Clifford Joseph Harris Jr. I love rappers' actual names. They all have, like, the dorkiest names ever. Clifford. <laughs> Come on. Like, you see how much less... I, you know, if I was called Clifford and I had to become a rapper, I too would just pick two random letters of the alphabet and go, this sounds much tougher, you know? Z, W. Sounds a lot tougher than Clifford, the big, angry, bad comedian. Surely it stands for something. Google what does T.I. stand for. I bet it doesn't even come up with results for him. He, it says T.I. is a, he's from the streets of Atlanta. His original stage name, Tip, it stems from his child name, nickname, childhood nickname, Tip. Right, so T.I. stands, so he just got rid of the P. He later changed it to T.I. out of respect for label mate Q-Tip. <laughs> <laughs> Man, imagine, right, when you're at the when you're doing really well as Tip and then a guy called Q-Tip comes along, <laughs> you change your name, and now it's 2022, you're still called T.I. and Q-Tip is nowhere to be found. Who's Q-Tip? What's Q-Tip doing right now? <laughs> now I need to find out who the fuck Q-Tip is. I hope he's really killing it, Right? Because you don't want to be the guy who checked. What's, what's his name now? Is it still Q-Tip? Still Q-Tip. Oh, thank God. Doesn't look like he's uploaded anything no, for a while. Not doing much. Bummer. Well, then I reckon out of respect for TI, Q-Tip should go to QTI and Tip should come back. That's great. So anyway, after all of this has happened, this big controversy, this, that, that, by the way, is like week two of TI's comedy career. And he's already getting into like physical altercations with female comedians on stage and then getting burned in the moment and then double burned online. And now everyone is on his Instagram going, hey, where's the million dollars? You said you would give it to a what? Are you broke? Do you not have a million dollars? Which I love, you know, that's such an American thing of like, oh, you don't have a million dollars? You must be broke. Meanwhile, they're earning $3.50 an hour at Denny's, right? <laughs> You're broke. Um, now he's gone and he was booked on this other show, right? Which was, uh, can you look at this other show? He was booed off stage during a comedy act. And it was like, it looked like an arena. Like it was really, really big show. And he's just getting booed off stage by the entire audience because he's trying to do comedy. Now I believe, right? He was booked on this like, it was like a, uh, what's it called? The event? Oh, hang on. He spat on the other comedian, on Lauren Knight. He spat on her. Oh, I didn't know that. What the fuck? Dude, talk about bombing. He's spitting on women? That's so fucked. What does it say about him spitting on it? 
That's it. That's that's all it said. It just said fucking out this website. Um the Atlanta MC who just spat on stage who ah oh, man, I can't fucking read today. I actually do do they mean that he was spitting a rap? No, no, had a spat. Oh, dude, you, yeah, we can't say that. You're supposed to be here to fact check I, me I and you're read. getting me in trouble for defamation. <laughs> What's going on? Like, oh, it says he spat on her. They had an argument. Dude, <laughs> this fucking, this, this setup is Chinese whispers from article to me because Keelan can't read. Yeah. He reads the article. Oh, it says he spat in her face and then killed her. <laughs> I can't believe it said it, he beheaded her on stage and, and then was holding her head in live stream. I think I might need glasses. You might. It's definitely possible. Do you want to read? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll read. How about I take over? And you know what, man? You just sit there and look pretty. <laughs> that's, that's what you should really be here for. Yeah. Keelan's lost the ability to read. That's great. Okay. So I'm pulling it up here. Right, so T.I. speaks on murdering an audience member on stage at the Barclays Centre comedy show. That's crazy. Apparently he, he uh, beheaded someone and then spat on their corpse. That's what they keep telling you. Yeah, I've, I, that's, that's, that's what this says. Um, no, uh, after T.I. was booed during a comedy set this weekend, right, he's promising fans that this moment will only motivate him. That's really great. I really like that. He's, I love that he's, so, all right, so he, he did Barclay Center, which I think is like a, it's a huge thing. It looks like an arena to me, right? But uh, he does an event, which is like, it's kind of like a multi, uh, a multi-creative type set where a lot of different people who do a lot of different things are all performing. So there are a lot of comedians, there are a lot of musicians. And now he was booked on this event <laughs> and Everyone there is expecting Tip, the musician, right? They're expecting him to like come out and do some music in between the comedy. But then he gets up and starts doing really terrible comedy to an arena full of people who know you as a musician and are expecting you to do music. No wonder they booed, right? And the whole audience is booing and he's just telling some like shit story of fucking someone's mom and he's just tanking and getting booed. And then he's, po to his credit, he's posted the clip himself, which I actually respect. And he's trying to spin it as like some kind of motivational thing, embracing every part of the process, enjoying every step of the journey. Yeah, look, man, I don't know if this is specifically part of the process, you know? Like when I started comedy, I started comedy many years ago, uh, and I don't remember every gig, but I don't really remember... Like in my first two weeks of comedy, getting booed at an arena show. <laughs> I don't remember that part of my process. It, I'm not sure if it is part of the process, but it's good to see that you think it's part of yours. Let's have a look at this clip. And he's posted this to his own social media. That, okay, that's kind of sick where he's trying comedy, he's getting booed and he goes, I have an advantage and then he starts playing a song. That is, I mean, that's pretty good. I, if I bomb, I just bomb, you know? Like I can't do that. That's one thing that he can do that I can't. Because if I, if, that's why my jokes have to be good. Because if I bomb, I can't just be like, all right, DJ, hit it and straight out of Frankston starts playing. <laughs> like I can't do that shit. That's cool. And then everyone's like really excited about it. Okay. Okay. I like that even more. I like that even more. Actually, he didn't play the full song. They're booing him during his comedy act. And then he goes, I've got a secret thing up my sleeve. He plays some of the song. The crowd goes wild. Finally, he's going to stop doing comedy and do the song. And then he turns the music go off and goes, fuck you, I'm doing my act. I'm totally turned around. I like him now. I think that's great. You think I was going to do a song you love from 2008? Too bad. I'm talking about fucking someone's mum and it's not very funny. That is... Really, really great. I love, I love the confidence on the guy. I, I, I can't knock it. I'm, a, I'm a TI fan. That's incredible. 
I just think that, I mean, why do you, why do you want to do comedy? And now he's posting videos of like other people, like other famous comedians bombing during their set. But like, and going, look, they came back from it. But it's like the videos that he's posting of comics bombing are bombing because they've like offended an audience. Like they've gone too far and they're, and they're like really old comics and they might be talking to conservative crowds who don't want to hear what they're talking about. It's a little bit different to like getting up on stage and telling a bad joke and, and receiving booze for it, you know? It's a little bit different, but I love the confidence. Speaking of confidence, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Use the best personal ball bag hair trimmer in the game. Manscaped.com, use code BIGSPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawnmower 4.0. Or is my code SPEARS? SPEARS. Okay, I'm going to do that again. Speaking of confidence, get some more confidence with today's sponsor of the show, manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping the Lawnmower 4.0, the best pube trimmer in the game. It's the best personal groomer I've ever owned. Dude, I use that everywhere. I use it on my chest. I use it on my on my unmentionables. And I use it on my neck and my beard. I got a comment on Luke and Lewis the other day. Someone said, whoever trimmed Lewis's beard needs a raise. I did it with the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0, baby. Can't get a raise. I got, a, I got money off. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The best beard and everything else trimmer in the game. They also sell uh, deodorant and uh, a bunch of uh, ball uh, moisturizers and... Uh, what, what else do they sell, Keelan? Do You've they, used more of it than I have. Yeah, they, they also have the weed whacker, the nose and ear. The nose trimmer, yeah. Nose trimmer. Someone on the team uses the nose, nose trimmer, but we've been forbidden to say who. And we'll just say it works well. <laughs> oh, okay, right. It's not, oh. it's not Keelan. Yeah. It's someone, <laughs> all right? And we won't say who. Forbidden. Uh, there's also, they're now bringing out like a face trimmer rather than, so you don't have to shave your ass and then your face. Oh. Because that can lead to infection. Oh. Yeah. True. So that's good. That is good. And they also have two-in-one shampoo. Two-in-one shampoo. And sure. there's nothing funny about that. <laughs> hey, what are you laughing at? Just something else? Uh, and then just a general moisturizer. Yeah. And 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 we stand by all of, all of their products, especially one of them. Use, co- use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Whatever you like from manscaped.com. All right, let's get back into the show here. Um, so yeah, my, I've already talked about my braces. Tasmania update, okay? I got an email from uh, the real estate da- state agent. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, you remember the state that we left it in? Uh, well, no. No? I wasn't there. No, the, well, you remember the state that you left it in, <laughs> right? Yeah, it wasn't yeah. bad though, was it? Oh, uh, it's full of food and scraps. Yeah. Food in the fridge and not clean. Terrible mouse problem, not clean at all. Bathroom hadn't been clean. And that bathroom hadn't been clean. Nothing had been clean, right? Now I'm a big big believer. I've only ever had two rentals, but I'm a big believer in rolling the dice on the deposit. Cuz I can't be fucked doing a lot of things yeah. that real estate agents expect me to do to win back my deposit. I have a sneaking suspicion that a lot of real estate agents are lazy, terrible people who don't do a good job and they just govern with fear. I agree. And I think that you can get away with a lot when you rent. I wouldn't recommend this, okay? Wouldn't recommend this behavior because it's, uh, it's high risk, low reward. Because <laughs> remember, it's not like you win money, right? You've given the money that is yours and then you just get it back. So, the, so I would say it's incredibly high risk, literally zero reward because you just, you only stand to lose this bet, <laughs> but I like, I like those odds, yeah. you know, I like that. So I roll the dice on the last rental, right? Which I didn't really talk about too much while we were in the process of doing it, just in case they heard this, dude, I was drilling into the walls of brick, big, long industrial, heavy screws so that I could hang lights from the brick wall, just dr- drilling straight into the brick. I was I was hanging hooks in the fucking roof mm. so I could hang Luke and Lewis orange curtains and green screens and whatever the fuck else I wanted. I was putting shit up on the walls. I had animals there. We weren't supposed to have animals there at the time. I wasn't looking after the garden at all. 
I was just going ham in that place because I noticed one time the woman do an inspection and she looked at all of the problems that were currently up and didn't notice any of them. She looked at them. She saw a giant studio light drilled into brick wall in an incredibly inconvenient position and didn't say anything to me. And I was like, I reckon this bitch is an idiot who hates her job and does it poorly and just enjoys, the only thing she enjoys about being a real estate agent is being a cunt. And, and I rolled the dice on that and I won my deposit. You got it back. Got it all back. Congratulations. Now the Hobart house, okay? Oh, yeah. This is the Frankston place. Hobart house. I left uh, because you left food in the fridge yeah. and the toilet because wasn't was clean. No, no, no. Because I left food in the fridge yeah. and you maliciously declined to clean it up <laughs> on purpose. We can get that on record. Yeah, no, you yeah. decided not to clean it up. No, because it was it had been sitting there for weeks yeah. before we left. Yeah, and I was like, "Well, he had weeks to take this out." Yeah, that's yeah. where that was from. Yeah, yes, yeah. So you maliciously decided not to clean up my mess, <laughs> and and I take offense at that. Yeah, right. Uh, Confirmed. Mouse problem way worse when we got back. Shit everywhere. There was like big piles of uh, plaster dust that rats had obviously just chewed through and scratched through and made a nice little pile. Mm. Uh, the toilets were completely fucked. Mm. Uh, I didn't clean them. Uh, I didn't clean up the dust pile or the rat shit or anything like that. You didn't clean the bathroom? Nah. That was filthy. Yeah, yeah. Because you and I shared it and we both don't clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was horrible. It was really bad. Because I thought, well, Keelan had three months to clean it up <laughs> before, so I'm not going to I had like that. I had like two days to, to yeah. get out of the house. Yeah, yeah. And Which I don't fault you for. Um, in fact, I'll fault myself for not cleaning the toilet. Uh Horrible condition. There was just shit everywhere. Um, real bad, bad condition. I don't think we even vacuumed right on the way out. Fantastic. Yeah, didn't do a thing. Yeah. Happy to say, got the whole deposit back. You're kidding. Got it all back. After they sent you like an eviction notice and everything. Yep, they sent me an eviction notice. They told me to get out. I moved out late. Got the whole deposit back, baby. That's fucked. No consequences. Congratulations. Really good stuff. And I highly recommend that to all renters. Just disrespect your surroundings. Well, I'm actually moving out on mm. this Sunday that this coming out. It's my day I'm moving out. Yep. So. Do you want to go have a bonfire in the kitchen? I, I was thinking of just not getting a clean. I honestly, they want, so they want you to steam clean the carpets. Yeah. At your expense. And provide $200. a profes professional receipt. Here's what I would do. Yeah. Right? Mm. Now I'm not saying you should do this. Okay. Because it's fraud. In fact, Keelan. We've already thought about it. But I'm going to tell you not to not to do this. Yeah. Do not just get Zach, our in-house graphic designer, to make you a nice receipt. Because if the carpet's dirty. No. We've they're not gonna, been there for three months. They're not going to notice. Yeah. They 100% are not going to look. They're going to see your receipt mm. and they, they won't even look at the carpet. I would absolutely... Just give oh. me one hundred and fifty dollars to tell Zach to make you <laughs> a receipt, and then you save fifty bucks. Or I could just make one myself. No, you need a professional. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, we have when Phoebe moved out six months ago at her old place. Yeah, uh, she got she had to get the carpet steam cleaned, so mm. maybe we could just use that receipt, and I could just change the date yeah. and the address. The address, hundred percent, absolutely. I think we'll do that and just yeah. give it a nice vac. And you save two hundred bucks. Fuck yeah. Absolutely. That's I highly recommend that. And uh, we'll, we'll check in next episode to see if you get your deposit back. This is all storytelling and satire. We made this up. Keelan's not moving out. He's actually homeless. <laughs> um, now, speaking of a hustler, <laughs> you were telling me a story uh, about a man who's been using the pandemic to his advantage <laughs> in a really inspiring way. Yeah, so... I a think lot of people in, with this COVID thing, they have been doing terrible things. You know, at the start of the pandemic, uh, it's, uh, it's Delfino. Uh, a lot of people at the start of the pandemic uh, have been, have been uh, doing a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of terrible things. Little in joke between me and Kill in there that you've that has gone way over your head. A lot of people have been during the pandemic been doing a lot of terrible things. You know, there were a lot of businesses that defrauded the JobKeeper program. There were a lot of people who went out and bought medical supplies and sold them at a giant markup. All right, a lot of people who went out and bought rat tests and have been reselling them like they're fucking sneakers. Okay, that's Terrible. That's disrespectful and that makes society worse. Now, one guy has worked at a purely ethical 
uh, hustle that anyone can do to make money in the pandemic. And what has he done? This is the headline. German man suspected of having 90 COVID jabs to sell vaccination cards. <laughs> this man's been vaccinated 90 times. Dude, we've got to study this man. He's got to be glowing. 90 vaccinations. A 60-year-old man allegedly had himself vaccinated over 90 times to sell vaccination cards. Wow. And they arrested him when they found out. But now that like the police and doctors mm. are kind of having an argument whether we should they should charge him or they should study him. <laughs> it's not immediately uh, not immediately clear what the impact uh, the approximately 90 shots of the vaccines have had, which were from different brands. Oh, so he got he got mixed up. So I reckon it's got to be immediately obvious. Like surely the guy's like 10 feet tall. Sometimes he goes invisible, you know. But it, another really funny thing, this is in Germany where yeah. Case numbers are kind of out of control, and yeah. they're really encouraging people to get vaccinations. Right. So, well, I think I think don't arrest him, don't study him, put him as the face of the vaccination campaign to show people how safe they are, and go. <laughs> this sixty-year-old man got ninety of them. You'll be fine. He did an interview with some like German news channel. Yeah. And he's just like, yeah, I couldn't sleep for weeks. I was in so much pain. I was, <laughs> I was in <laughs> crippling pain. Like, he was describing being in the fetal position in bed, just shivering for days. But, okay. But surely that happened at jab 20, you know? And then he got <laughs> 70 more? What are you doing, bro? Surely you learned that lesson right. after jab five. Yeah, apparently after two weeks of that, it just disappeared and now it doesn't feel anything. Oh, so he's like superhuman. He's, <laughs> he's built up an immunity to not only to COVID, but also to the vaccine. Yeah. And yeah, study this man. What a superhuman. I know people. Well, I don't, I know, I know people who have friends who are uh, like paid homeless people to get vaccinated for them so that they can get the pass without getting the jab. Like this does happen. Yeah. Uh, so it is, it's, I didn't know that it was like one guy though, like a, like a vax pass dealer. How much money did he make? It doesn't say. It's got to be a lot. They probably don't want to tell people because they don't want to encourage it. It's got to be heaps then. Yeah. You know, there's a reason why they didn't put, oh, he made $100 every time he did it. You could probably sell a pass for 200 bucks. Surely more. I reckon, I reckon, man, if, if there was a, the pass at the, t more like a few months ago, I would pay like $1,000 for that. If I was super anti-vax and I couldn't go anywhere I wanted to or travel or live my life, mm. that's worth at least $1,000. Plus, some other guy's got to go under some medical procedure for the 75th time. That's, that's worth true. a grand. Surely, I, I would hope that man's not doing it for anything less than $1,000. I think it's hilarious that he was in bed for two weeks shivering, still going out and getting it every day, and the thought probably never crossed his mind that it's not worth it. Yeah, he was... He, he was well, that, that, mean, that makes me think it must have been a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> but even then, like $1,000 to get out of bed while you're writhing in pain doesn't seem like much. You know? Like, oh, I, I, I could just work for two weeks somewhere. <laughs> yeah. You know? Instead of writhing in pain for two weeks. That's so crazy. The man's got to be like super smart now, like super autism. Like he's so autistic, it's come back around and he has incredibly good social skills now. <laughs> he only makes eye contact. You know, <laughs> like he's he's walking around the city like he's got aimbot on in Call of Duty, but it's just eye contact the whole time. He never looks at the sky or, or the floor. He's just always like nailing people, direct eye contact every time he walks past someone. It's pretty funny. What a legend. I wouldn't recommend it though. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm excited. To, I'm excited to get my braces. Do you, I, I, you know, I got a comment recently mm. on a, I actually, because I talked about the braces on Luke and Lewis. And I got this comment um, that I want to read out on the show because it made me so upset. Because this surgery that I'm getting is very, very common, weirdly. I'm getting a lot of, a lot of people reaching out and telling me about their experience with it. Um, got this one. Oh, also, my sleep apnea is so bad that I'm now falling asleep at like 6 p.m. backstage at shows. Mm. Like I was doing sound check uh, before one of Luke's shows and they needed me to run through my intro and I was asleep on the floor. <laughs> like, that's how fucking awful it's gotten. Um, so uh, I'm now getting a CPAP machine, which is that 
giant ventilator Darth Vader contraption. It's like a mouth guard attached to a garden hose attached to a generator. So it holds my mouth open and blasts air down my throat. And that's how I'm going to sleep every night for 12 months. Because this first surgery that I'm getting in a couple weeks only moves the top half of my mouth so that the bottom half of my mouth can be moved and so that I can close my mouth after the second surgery. The second surgery is the one that's going to fix the problem. The first one is a surgery and then a year of braces before I can get the second one. So all this pain I'm going to go through in the next month isn't going to help me at all. In fact, it's just going to make me look very ugly and sound like shit. But when I come out of this, it's going to be the greatest glow down and glow up of all time. My facial structure is going to be like the price of Bitcoin. It's going to be a big crash, but then it's going to spike and a lot of people are going to be very happy. Right? But I got this comment, okay? One comment from someone, good stuff getting the sleep apnea treated. Welcome to the CPAP club. Started it 12 months ago and it changed my life. So a lot of people are just saying that it, only good reviews from the things that I'm doing in the surgery. So I'm very optimistic about it. Uh, or at least I was until I read this. As someone who had the mouth spacer and the braces combo, this is the first surgery I'm getting, it sounds worse than it actually is. That's great. Oh, nice. And then he goes, good luck. Thank you very much, Sam. Appreciate that. <laughs> then they go, also, you're going to drool a lot. Carry tissues. <laughs> yes. Carry tissues for the first two weeks. Two weeks of fucking drooling through my gap tooth. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, the fucking microphone's going to be wet halfway through an episode. This sucks. I'm 28 years old. I'm going to have a gap tooth, braces or something in my mouth and I'm going to be drooling. Someone else wrote a comment saying that I'm going to taste steak two weeks later after I eat it because I won't be able to brush my teeth properly because of the braces and then I'm going to have a spacer in the roof of my mouth that I won't want to touch because it'll be too painful. This sucks. And I'm going to have a CPAP machine. That is way too much shit to put in my mouth. That's what she said. <laughs> I'm going to have every night, this is me, in my mouth is going to be braces, a spacer in the roof of my mouth with rings wrapped around the side of my teeth. And then I'm going to have to fit a fucking Allen key in there to turn it, to widen it. And then I'm going to have to put in a fucking CPAP machine like a mouth guard. And then I'm going to have to suck someone's dick for money to pay for it. And then they're going to get last week's dinner all over their cock because it won't come out of my fucking braces for a week. I'm so excited. May the fourth be with you. This sucks. But on the plus side, to anyone who doesn't like me yelling on the podcast, I probably won't be able to do that for six months. I just really hope that it doesn't affect my speech to the point where I become unbearable to listen to. For the love of God, please stay with me. <laughs> I'm going to end it there, guys. Not the podcast. I'm going to get... No, never mind. I'm going to end the podcast, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I appreciate your support. Thank you to everyone who came out to the shows. Uh, it was an incredible six shows. Um, you know, six shows in a big, beautiful theatre. So, so grateful to do it, uh, especially with the uncertainty around me performing at all this year. Really, really means a lot. And pe meeting everyone afterwards was so lovely. Uh, and uh, now I have now I have like a proper idea of what I'm doing with my year. Or at least I know that it's all clear, the back half of it. So I'm going to start kind of thinking about what I would like to do, which I honestly haven't been able to do for two years i've just been thinking about oh what video should i put out in a couple of days and that's as far in the future as, as i've been thinking now i finally have no restrictions to deal with these surgeries are finally blocked in uh and i know what i can actually potentially do so i can start thinking and planning towards for the future so if there's something that you would like me to do or a city you'd like me to come to or a tour or a video series or a thing you would like me to do i would love to hear it send it in the, in the comment section below um, and thank you very much to, for coming out to the shows. And if you want to see me, sign up to loosebeers.com slash gig list. And I'll let you know when I'm coming to your city or your country. And uh, yeah, I'm going to continue on for Patreon here. Uh, if you would like uh, an extended version of the podcast, it's up right now on Patreon. Search Patreon Lewis Spears on Google. All right. Thank you. Fuck you. And I hope you have a shit one. Bye. Bye.